Remember that one time I said that Sabion Linux was the most interesting Linux distro I'd ever used? Well, move over Sabion and meet Bodhi or Bodhi or whatever. It's a fascinating specimen based in large part on Ubuntu with some components from Mint here and there. Bodhi is an old one too, it's been around for almost as long as Linux Mint has, so why have you never heard of it? Well, I don't know actually, as you're about to see, it's an incredibly interesting Linux distro for a lot of different reasons. The installer here is Ubuntu's Ubiquity installer, it's basically the exact same. It's very functional, but also very boring. I think that the only not boring thing about it is the hilarious backwards mouse cursor. After the install and the boot up, we see the login screen, and after the login screen is the loading screen, followed by the welcome app, which isn't really an app at all, it's actually a web page, which is fine, I guess, it's better than nothing. So Bodhi is a lightweight Linux distro that uses the Moshka desktop environment. How lightweight is it, you ask? Well, get a load of this. Fresh install weighs in at 5.5 gigabytes, that's not the lightest we've seen on the show. But look at the memory usage. You're reading that right, 290 megabytes. And in HTOP, we see 50 tasks and 63 threads. Compare that to your own desktop after a fresh restart, tell me how much yours uses. And also, I can't not comment on how bad HTOP looks in this terminal. This is a terminal that's provided by the desktop, so it's not like, you know, GNOME terminal or something like that. It's trying to do some fancy gradients, but HTOP just isn't coming through. So what the hell is Maksha desktop? I keep wanting to say Mashka, but it's Maksha, I think. Have you ever heard of the Enlightenment desktop? Well, Maksha is the spiritual continuation of it. I was hoping it would have apps like the K-Info Center or something that would show me about the desktop, but instead, there's these apps that are like credit scrollers and license disclaimers. It's kind of lame, not gonna lie. Now this desktop is basically the Enlightenment desktop with a fancy theme and some new features, not unlike how NX desktop is basically a super custom theme on top of KDE. I'm not super familiar with the Enlightenment desktop to begin with. I haven't used it in years, so pretty much all of this stuff is new to me. And if you're thinking that the overall aesthetic of this desktop looks straight out of 2010, I'm thinking the same thing. It looks like a riced out desktop from hmm, 2011, maybe, with a modern-ish GTK-like theme attached. I mean, the window decorations are from Arc, right? But Bodhi comes with a default Enlightenment theme too, which honestly, I like better. I like it a lot better. The green symbolic icons just look bad, and when you install like non-native apps, for lack of a better term, they show up as regular apps, so it clashes with the, the weird green aesthetic. I'm not even sure what they were trying to go for here. It reminds me a little bit of like night vision goggles or something, I don't know. Just plain enlightenment doesn't look that bad, to be honest. For a theme that looks like it's straight out of 2010, it's aged pretty well. Or maybe it's one of those things where it's so bad it's good. In the settings app, there's an advanced section, which has some more advanced, almost YAST-like configurators, like one for performance, engine, whatever that's supposed to mean, and even environment variables. What's a bash RC file? In the way of apps, there practically are none. This is probably as bare bones as it gets for a Linux distro with a desktop environment. Like, what you're seeing here is basically all that it comes with. An interesting thing about the desktop is that it doesn't call these panels or toolbars or whatever, but rather shelves. And of course you can change stuff on the shelf, like where gadgets live and add gadgets and remove gadgets, which are like, you could think of them like KDE plasmoids, sort of. You can move gadgets from the shelf to the desktop, but sometimes this happens. Did you catch that? Let's see that again. Honestly, it's probably due to my crappy display drivers, because these are the open source and video drivers, which we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, Moksha has some glitches. In the way of networking, I found nothing to even suggest that the system supports networking at all. At least not through the desktop, anyway. There's no networking section in the file manager, which, by the way, is PC Man File Manager from LXDE. There's no Samba controller, and there's no DLNA media sharing from what I could see either. My encrypted internal drive mounted fine, but my SD card with EXFAT did not. I tried working with the archive files, but much to my surprise, there's not even an archive manager installed. So let's get this straight. There's no archive extractor, there's no media player, no networking stuff, no printer support on this thing. 
the hell kind of distro is this? How could it not support these things? I mean, come on. All right, all right. There is another version of Bodhi that has most of these things pre-installed and it's called the App Pack release. It's like a separate ISO. Bodhi aims to be super lightweight by default, so the default option on the website is a bare bones install for you to build on. And if you wanted apps, oh boy, App Pack really goes bananas here. Clearly favoring GTK apps, there's so much pre-installed here that it makes my head spin. We've got OpenShot, Blender, FileZilla, Steam, the Liberate Office Suite, Mint's Update Manager, and more. But despite all of these apps, there wasn't much overlap. For example, there's but one media player, BLC. So with the app pack, we can extract archives and playback media files, and actually the RAR file didn't work at all, but still, all of the audio files worked, but some of the video files had some trouble, like the WebM file it opened in Firefox, and the playback was really choppy for some reason. The app images I tried worked good, but the flat packs did not. In fact, neither flat pack nor snaps are supported. Bodhi does have its own little app store called uh, App Center, but it's literally just a web page. The only thing I could see coming here are for themes for the desktop, of which there are like a handful of. And none of them are very good or interesting either. It's just like weird. Some of them are broken, but it might be because you have to log out and log back in to see them right. But it's just, I still like the default enlightenment theme the best. Oh, and even after installing the app pack ISO, I couldn't find anything pertaining to Bluetooth at all. And my printer wasn't auto detected or installed or anything like that. So the first game up is this delightfully adorable game called Dog Sled Saga, which is uh, exactly what it sounds like. The remarkable thing about it is that I started playing this before I realized I hadn't installed the NVIDIA drivers. That's right, you're seeing this 60 frames a second, look at the mango HUD at the top left, using the open source drivers. There's not much happening in the graphics department, yeah, but it's pretty awesome that these open source drivers can do it at all, considering they apparently can't handle GNOME maps or even GNOME videos sometimes. I had to install the NVIDIA drivers manually from the repos because I recorded this part on the regular bare bones ISO, so I used apt-get. The app pack ISO seems to include Ubuntu's driver installer, so that's nice. Next up was No Man's Sky, which was a little choppy when flying around, but it was pretty much perfect after I landed. I didn't have any of the visual tearing I saw when I was playing this on Linux Mint a couple episodes ago, and even though the frame rate is capped at 30, I think it might just run better here on Bodhi or Bodhi, or whatever. And at last we've got good old GTA 5 which ran flawlessly. I mean, look at this. And look at the frame rate. Holy smokes, I'm pretty sure I can say that this is the best GTA has ever run on any distro in the series. This is a high bar to top. So what do I think of Bodhi? Well, what do you think about it? It's delightfully bizarre, and I know that a lot of people are gonna look at it and say, oh yuck, that distro looks too old for me. I like it in a weird, curious, and nostalgic way, but honestly, Bodhi doesn't really have much going for it. Like, it's lightweight, yeah, but the desktop is just so weird, I don't know. And it has a learning curve, too. You can't just hop from GNOME or KDE over to it and fit right in. Moksha is just kind of weird. Not in a bad way, it's just different. Like, you have to be committed to learning it to really get the most out of it. I guess if you wanted a ultra lightweight distro that ran games super well with super low system requirements, Bodhi might be your distro. It's just a shame that it's another one of those distros that has been around for a long time but nobody has really heard of it and even fewer people talk about it.